Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Nick Foy, the founder of AskNickFoy.com and welcome to this Aveda tutorial series where I'm gonna be sharing different tips related to the Aveda WordPress theme. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into today's tutorial that I've got for you. In this Aveda tutorial, I'll be showing you how to customize the header and menu area of your website. So if you're brand new to websites, let's scroll up here to the top. This is considered the menu bar. So I've got different uh, pages here in the menu bar that people can click on to navigate around my website. And then the header area is kind of this whole collective area up here. So there's different ways that you can adjust the header settings you know, so that look, the layout of it looks different. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and show you the basics today and let's go ahead and get started. So in here in your theme options, we found the Aveda tab here and then the theme options link down here at the bottom. It's gonna open up your theme settings here. So what we're gonna need to do is go here to menu item number two called menu. Click on the main menu tab and it's gonna have the menu height. So right now it's set to 84 pixels. So that's how tall the menu height is. This is 84 pixels tall. Then you can choose if you want it to be a bar, arrow, or background for the highlight style. So right now we've got this little blue bar that's kind of hard to see. It's tucked in between the white and the black. Uh, but if you want to you know, have a different highlight style, you can navigate back and forth between these three tabs. Then the main menu highlight bar size, so it's only set to two. So we could crank it up to 10 or 20, which would make this bar a lot fatter. So right now at two, it's real skinny, making it very hard to see. That can be adjusted here. The main menu item padding controls the right padding for menu text in pixels. So 45 is what it's currently set at on my website. And this is what it looks like. There's about 45 pixels here between the different, the different pages that are up here in the menu bar. So if we increased it to 60, you know, it'd put a lot more space between these two. Or if we wanted to fit more menu items into our menu, if I had lots of different pages I wanted in my menu, I could shrink the space down between them by decreasing this from 45 down to 20 or 30 pixels. The main menu drop shadow right now is turned on. So what that will do is it makes a little shadow right here where it's, the page separates, but my page shadow cannot really be seen because I use a blue uh, box here that goes right after the menu but if this was white then you would see a little gray shadow showing up there. The main menu drop down width is 180 pixels so out here again if somebody was hovering over one of these menu items and we happen to make it a drop down menu where there's more links they could click on that kind of drop down the width of that box would open up about 180 pixels wide. So you can decide if you want to make it wider or smaller. The main menu drop down item padding, again, that's gonna separate the different items in your drop down menu. The main menu drop down divider, you can turn on or off, drop down indicator on or off, search icon. So this will show up at the, at the very far right of your menu. So right now there's gonna be this little search icon showing up here. So to turn it off, you can just come back here and turn off and then that will get rid of it. So we'll go ahead and do that because I do not need that on my menu. Main menu icon circle borders. So if we left the search icon turned on and we turned on circle borders, all that would do is put a circle around this icon. All right, next the main highlight label radius controls the border radius of all your menu highlight labels. So again, this is set to zero which I believe is why you cannot see the menu highlight shadow showing up there. Then the main menu drop down background color. So when your menu drops down, right now it's set to like a lighter gray color. And then when they hover different items in the drop down menu, it turns a slightly lighter gray. So you can change these colors if you want like a darker background. And then when you're hovering a certain menu item in the drop down, you want it to kind of contrast so that people know where they're hovering. So you want to make it a little bit lighter than whatever background color you're using. And then the separator color, that's just lines that go across the, the width of the drop down box to separate each of your different drop down menu items. 
So for example, here's like an example menu drop down box that what it would look like out on your website. So you hover over performance if that was in your menu out on your website and you know all these things would drop down and you'd see a little bar or a line kind of separating all of them. But you can make it the exact same color as your background color if you don't want the lines to be visible. Next is the text in your menu. So we can customize the font family. We can make it bold. We can change the font size, the letter spacing, uh, the font color. So right now I've got it set to Carla. Bold 700, 17 pixels is the font size and black. So when we come back out here, this is what it looks like. You can see that it's bold and that's 17 pixels in size. That's what the font looks like when I have it set to Carla. So we can you know, adjust the different font families if we want different types of font. And then the main menu font hover color is set to blue. So when I come back out here and we hover over one of the words, it turns blue. And then when one of them is selected, you know, whatever page of the website you're on, so right now I'm on my home page, so that turns this one blue so that people know where they're at. So main menu drop down font size. So when the we you create a little drop down menu, you can choose what size you want these items to be, what font size. Side navigation font size, that's where you'll control that. So it's set to 14 pixels. And then main menu drop down font color. So here, for example, these drop down fonts are kind of like a light gray. But you know, if I had a drop down menu out on my website, it would be black right now. So I would tr probably change that to like a white or a light gray if I had a darker background color. So you can go ahead and click save changes and that will update all of the menu settings. All right, so going back up here to the top under the menu tab here, we were under the main menu settings. You also have the flyout menu, secondary top menu, mobile menu, mega menu, and main menu icons. So these are where you'll customize all the different settings for each of those, which I'm not gonna get into in this video. But one that you probably will end up having to customize is the secondary top menu. So that would be you know another menu kind of stacked on top of this one. Uh, some websites have that. I decided to go with the style where it's just one menu straight across, but there's other options. So now let's go down here into header where you can choose which type of you know content you want to show up. So again, in the Aveda theme settings here, we go under header, header content. You can choose if you want it at the top, left, or right. So right now it's selected as top. So that puts it up here at the top. If we selected left, it would put a menu bar down the left side. If we selected right, it would set a menu down the right side down here. And then, you know, on mobile, you kind of have one of those little like three bar symbols and then uh, you click on it and it turns into like a drop down menu on mobile devices. But on desktop, this is what it would look like. So then the select header layout section. So right now you can see that I've selected the one where it's just one bar running across the page with the logo over here to the left. They also have the one bar with the secondary menu stacked on top of it. So this is what I was just talking about. If you wanted to go into the secondary menu settings, you could customize these settings. Uh, they've got like social media icons, contact information, or they've got one where it's just plain white. So you can choose if you want one where it's colored or if it's plain white. And then we've got one here where it's three menus stacked on top of each other. So you can decide if you want that or not. And I believe for one of my websites, I'm currently using this one and I only have these two. I decided to turn off this top menu at the very top. So I only have you know these two showing. So that's an option as well. If you wanna get rid of you know this top menu part, you just don't add anything to it and it'll disappear on its own. Then we've got the other, the, uh, the mobile kind of uh, menu bar. So again, on mobile devices, you'll usually see this little like three bar grid here that turns into a drop down menu and then somebody's logo will show up. So if you kind of like the mobile look, you can just keep it consistent across your website by choosing this one so that it looks like this, whether they're on desktop or on mobile. And then lastly, we've got this one down here where they put the logo in the center and then they split up your menu items on each side of it. So that's a little bit different of a look than the one up here at the top where they put the logo over here to the left. So we'll scroll down here now, slider position. Usually you just leave it checked as below. So if you decide to create you know, a slider for your website, then your menu will start here and then your little slideshow 
uh, slider will go underneath it. But some websites like to have a slider start off first and then the menu kind of shows up down here where this gray box is. So all this would be you know, your slider and then your menu would start showing up here at the bottom where the gray is. So that's one way to do it if you wanted to change that setting. Next, we'll go into header background image. So if you want to give it a custom background image, you can upload it there. Right now, I just have it set to a white plain background, so I don't need to upload an image for that. So header styling, this is where you'll adjust your header settings. So you can add padding to your header. You can turn on your header shadow. You can make it 100% width where it spans the entire page and you can set the background color that you want your header to be. So one option could be turning this to a black, making the header dark and black, and then I could go back in here to my menu section under the main menu settings. We could go back into the font and turn the font white so that it shows up when we have a black menu header. So that's one way you could customize it, but I chose to do white as my background and use black for my text color. And then sticky header is the last settings here. So you can turn on on or off. And what that'll do is it'll lock your menu if you turn it on so that as somebody's scrolling down the website, that menu will continue to show up at the top of the page. So we'll go ahead and turn it on and show you what it looks like as an example. So you can decide to turn it on and then you can choose to turn it off for tablets and mobile devices or you could turn it on for everything, desktop, mobile, and tablets if you want. And then sticky header animation makes it kind of shift a little bit. It gets it a little bit smaller when it starts scrolling so that it's kind of noticeable. So you can leave that animation on. You can choose if you want it to change colors. So maybe it starts out as a white menu, but when you start scrolling and it becomes a sticky header, then it could shift colors if you want. And you can choose to make the you know font change right here for the sticky header. That way you don't have to go back into the menu settings and change the font color that make it convenient so that you can adjust your different colors here right next to each other menu item padding so again your sticky menu is basically like your menu that you have right now it just kind of could change once you start scrolling if you want to have it look a little different you can choose to customize these settings so we'll click save changes and then we'll go back out here refresh the page and take a look at what it looks like okay so as we start scrolling You'll notice how it starts off, you know, big, full size, but as I start scrolling, it kind of shrinks up a little bit, so it gets a little smaller in height. The text gets a little smaller, everything kind of looks like it shrinks, but while I'm scrolling, the menu is still showing up. So again, that is what the sticky menu header does, and these are the settings to adjust the size. So right now, if I wanted to make things not shrink, I could increase the size of everything and increase the font size and that'll make things you know look normal like they were when people were all the way up here at the top and then lastly for your menu and header area we've got the logo here that says free blog training videos so to edit that you just go under the header section here and go down one more to the logo section and then this little pop out menu here click on the logo and it'll have you upload the logo that you want to use so default logo, if you want another logo for your sticky header, you can upload a separate one there. If you want a mobile logo, you can upload a mobile specific logo. And then they've got the logo margins, so you can update the pixels here if you want space to show up either to the left, to the right, below the logo, above the logo. So those are the four different uh, spacing issues that you can correct if things don't look right when you first upload your logo and then you can choose the alignment left, center, or right, and then click Save Changes. And now you've made your menu with a logo with all the different text here, and we've customized the header style, the header colors, the menu colors, menu font size. We talked about drop-down menus. Now the last step to actually customize what goes in your menu, well, all you're gonna do is come here under Appearance in your WordPress toolbar, under Appearance, so come down here to Appearance, and you'll find the thing that says menus right here. So when we click on that, it's gonna open up the menu editor and then you're just gonna select what pages you want from the pages bin right here. So we can check mark all the different pages we wanna to add to the menu. Click add to menu, it'll import them over here and then we can adjust the order we want them to show up. So starting from the top down, that's where it starts from left to right. So home is the very first one that shows up because it's up here at the top. So we can readjust these by dragging them if we wanted to. If we want to delete one, we do the little drop down, come here to remove, 
and it will remove it for us. If we want to change the label, what it says, we can customize it so that it says home, just like this one. If we wanted to customize it to say, you know, start a profitable blog, we could change that to something else like, you know, start here or, you know, get started and then you can customize the link. So this is a custom link instead of a page. So here's the pages bin, but we can close that. We can come down here to the custom links bin and add in our own custom URL if you want to add like a third party website to your menu that they could click out to. Like if you've got an e-commerce store you want people to click to and go to, you could add your e-commerce link here in the menu. Lastly, you're gonna to need to check where you want this menu to show up. So if you want to create a separate menu for the top navigation, that secondary menu that goes on top of this one, you could have a whole separate menu for that. And then you could check this one as main navigation, which is what we did since we want this to be our main navigation. If you want a sticky header navigation menu, you can create a custom menu just for the sticky header. And then lastly, you click save menu, it'll update those changes and you're good to go. You've now learned how to set up your menu, customize the settings of the menu, customize the settings of the header area inside the Aveda theme settings.